Hi and welcome to a new Vollog soldering episode. Today we're going to assemble an LCD transistor tester kit which I got from Banggood. This should be quite an interesting kit because according to its specs it can measure and identify various components like resistors, inductors, capacitors, transistors, thyristors, as well as measuring and generating signals of low frequency. As usual, links for this kit and its accessories will be in the description below, so do check them out. The kit comes in this anti-static shielding bag. Let's see what we get inside. So we get the LCD screen in here, this uh, red PCB that will hold everything together and all the uh, passives as well as the uh, socket and microcontroller used in this project. It's fairly typical for these uh, Chinese made DIY kits, they are not very, the parts that come in the kit are not very well labeled, so you do kind of uh, need to get your uh, color code table for the resistors and uh, make sure you read all the markings on the parts before you actually solder the part in just to make sure you don't make any errors that you'll have to desolder later on. As usual in my soldering activities I'm going to use some um, solder wire that has the inside uh, core filled with water soluble flux. My uh, cheap uh, Chinese copy soldering iron some water soluble flux, I use these uh, flux pens from Kester and uh, probably a side cutter for cutting the excess length on the through hole parts. So I'm going to start the assembly with these uh, six 10K resistors. First we're going to pre-bend them into the right shape. And I'm just doing this by hand. I mean, you could use you could use one of those uh, plastic forming tools, but uh, I'm too lazy to do that, and it should be okay doing it doing them by hand. As mentioned previously in uh, other assembly videos, um, I do like to keep the same rule all over the board for the orientation of these parts. So, for example, we could uh, align the resistors uh, color. By, the, by their color code left to right and keep the same rule for all the resistors on this PCB. Usually these kind of kits will have the values of the components marked on seal screen directly on the PCB so you don't really need the additional instructions for assembling this kit. You just see that you have uh, 10K resistors in here and you place the tank and you place and solder the 10K resistor in there. Now it's best to make sure the PCB lies flat on the surface just to keep the parts pushed against the PCB so you get a nice um, flat finish when you're done with all the components. And after soldering a couple of parts, I usually trim the, their leads away because they get in the way of uh, continuing with the assembly. As I've said in previous videos, I really encourage you to use flux whenever you're soldering because extra flux can never hurt your soldering while not having any might or might not produce uh, good soldering jobs. I know there are some people out there who think you don't need solder because there is the 
rosin core inside your solder wire but sometimes that's not enough for a good solder joint and this is the last of the resistors this is how the board looks after being done with uh, soldering all the resistors now I'm going to continue with the uh, capacitors it's quite easy to get the capacitors right because uh, for example when you have a capacitor on the PCB labeled 104 you just have to search the uh, capacitor that has a label 104 Let's also solder in these uh, 22 picofarad capacitors, which are likely used in the crystal oscillator circuit. So we have these uh, three capacitors left for assembly. I can see these two electrolytic ones are 10 microfarads. Remember the longer lead is always positive on these uh, capacitors and the uh, stripe marks the negative lead which is also marked on the PCB and you need to be careful about that alignment with these uh, electrolytic caps. After assembling all the capacitors on this board you will notice you have one extra left which doesn't seem to go anywhere on the board is this uh, large ceramic film capacitor which is marked uh, 224 that means uh, 220 nanofarads but this capacitor isn't meant to go assembled on the PCB but rather to be used when finished when um, testing and calibrating this device so we'll use this one later I'm going to continue the assembly with these uh, four transistors and the crystal oscillator. The crystal oscillator is an 8 MHz one, so it means the Atmega328 runs at just uh, 8 MHz. I'm gonna have to keep this one with my finger just to make sure it's flush to the PCB while soldering the first terminal when soldering these uh, transistors just make sure you match the numbers on the case of the transistor in this case it's 9014 with the numbers uh, labeled in the silk screen and as well uh, the orientation of the package because it, as you can see the package has uh, one side which is straight and the other side which is this kind of uh, semicircle shape and uh, you will get the same shape on the actual silk screen the PCB so you need to get the orientation right for everything to work one important note when soldering these kind of packages like uh, transistors in this example don't try to push the actual transistor package all the way to the bottom of the PCB to make it flush with the PCB because as you can see the LEDs start from the package uh, with a very small pitch between uh, each individual lead and then they fan out towards the PCB holes but if you try to push the package all the way to the PCB you will put too much stress on the actual leads of the package and that might cause uh, irreparable damage and we also have to solder in this guy which is the TL431 this one is a precision shunt regulator basically you get a constant current output out of this device and you can use it as a reference next up I will solder the socket for the Atmega328 microcontroller in the case of this socket it also has the small key for pin 1 so it's nice to kind of respect that orientation and uh, because it's also marked in the seal screen just make sure you place the socket in the right orientation because later on when you uh, will assemble this board and uh, add the microcontroller you will keep into uh, mind that orientation and I will touch with solder just uh, two opposite corners to make sure it stays in the right position before continuing any further with the soldering
Okay, so now with these uh, two opposite corners, the socket is staying in the right position, so I can continue soldering. Now, at this point, if you plan on using a case, either the one that you can find on Banggood or uh, one of your own, for example, I have this, uh, let me just zoom out, I have this black box that I could use for, uh, for this project, but I don't intend to. Uh, what I meant was that at this point, if you plan on uh, assembling this circuit inside an enclosure, um, it's best to stop the assembly and don't continue with this uh, supplied socket or the LED or the rotary encoder because you might want to have these on your front panel of your enclosure and just run wires from these to the actual PCB but since I'm not going to use any enclosure for this project I can go on and solder these uh, components on the PCB itself when assembling the LED the same rule as for the capacitor applies the longer lead is the anode, which is the positive terminal. So you carefully align that with the PCB and then you can solder the LED in. Regarding the supplied LCD panel, while well, the LCD itself has 20 pins, you only get an 8 pin header for connecting the LCD to the main PCB. So the rule for soldering in this header is you start from pin 5. So the actual header needs to go in like this starting from pin 5 and going up all the way up to pin 12 here is the same thing from the other side this is how the 8 pin header should be soldered on the LCD panel now because I am using uh, this water soluble flux the first step after finishing assembling this PCB is to give it a thorough cleanse in water to remove all that flux residue that is left on the PCB. If you didn't use any uh, water soluble flux or if your flux is marked as OK to be left on the board you don't need to clean the PCB. But the main reason I'm using water soluble flux is to allow me to clean it with water and get that nice clean PCB finish in the end. So this is what I meant for a clean board that's why I use uh, water soluble flux and the uh, solder wire that contains water soluble flux so that when I'm finished soldering I give the board a good rinse in water and then you get this uh, really nice clean finish these two brass standoffs are used to keep the LCD in place so you also need to attach those two but before attaching the actual LCD panel and the microcontroller to this board there is some instructions in the assembly manual that say you have to check voltages uh, to make sure everything was assembled correctly before proceeding with adding the microcontroller and LCD panel so to do the test I am going to supply the circuit with, with uh, plus 9 volts limited at just 50 milliamps from my HP linear power supply so this is the plus terminal on the 9 volt battery connector this is minus okay and you are supposed to measure voltage between uh, pin 7 and uh, pin 22 which are exactly these ones in the microcontroller socket while pressing the uh, button on the rotary encoder so we get 5 volt exactly as we should everything is right now so we can go ahead and uh, assemble the microcontroller and the LCD panel I'm just now noticing the microcontroller wasn't supplied in any kind of anti-static foam just in this uh, basic foam for protecting the pins usually these kind of uh, packages have their pins slightly bent out outward, outwards so they don't exactly fit the socket so what I do is uh, push it against a flat surface just to bend the pins slightly inward to make it fit the actual socket 
so now I have the pins pointing uh, slightly inward but they should fit the socket now yep and the LCD panel which is supposed to go on top and we have these two mounting holes but we're going to take care of those uh, later after we test the device so let's apply power again and press the switch well success it seems our device is working this small device has quite a lot of features packed in but I'm not going to show all of them in this video because it will get too long uh, but don't worry I will do another video uh, reviewing some of the features or functions that you get from this device for example you do get a, a frequency measurement function a frequency generator function you also get a 10-bit PWM generator with adjustable pulse width and you also get a custom uh, capacitance plus ESR measurement between test points 1 and 3 as I was reading in its manual it appears that you can also use the capacitance plus ESR measurement function in circuit without having to remove the device under test from the circuit board but I will be testing uh, all of those functions in a future video so thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it if that was the case please give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter see you next time